ready, and go. Oh, hey, hi, welcome back. I actually don't really need glasses. I wear these for the computer. They're like the yellow light ones. I just, I kind of, I'm vibing it. Let me know what you think, but I feel it's like sexy secretary vibes. So I want to talk about libido today because I constantly get questions from women about this topic. I especially want to talk about it because everything that you think you know about libido and the way that you think your sex drive works, I can almost guarantee you is wrong. We have a fundamentally flawed understanding culturally about how pleasure works for women and people with vulvas. And that is literally the reason I have this channel because I want to break through some of that misinformation. You all obviously know I'm not a sex therapist. I'm not a sexologist, but I have been writing about sex for over a decade now. So I do know a thing or two. I've read every study that you can imagine that's ever been done into sex and sexuality. And also I happen to know a little bit about pleasure for people with vulvas because I have a vulva and I also sleep with people who have vulvas. It's a winning combo. Because we don't talk about sex as a culture because there's still so much taboos around it, people don't ask questions and this is how misinformation happens. And one of the biggest pieces of misinformation that we still have as a culture today around libido is this idea that you can lose a libido or that you can have a broken sex drive. So for First things first, you can't lose your libido. That's not how it works. It's not like you're taking your libido out for a walk and all of a sudden it just breaks away from the leash and like runs out through the traffic. No, that doesn't happen. It's still there. It's always there. When people talk about losing their libido, what they really mean is that they are not currently experiencing a strong interest in sex. But what we often fail to do is to look at that more contextually. We go, I don't feel interested and having sex with my partner. Therefore, I must have lost my libido. My sex drive must be broken. And women will start researching pills and treatment protocols and going online and researching what is a solution for this? How can I fix myself? But you don't need fixing because you're not broken. And you're also not going to suddenly strengthen your libido by looking at it as if it exists within a vacuum. Our libidos are responsive to our environment. And more often than not, when we say we don't have an interest in sex, what it really means is we aren't interested in having sex with our partner. If you are able to look at porn, if you are able to have solo sex, then you do have a libido. If you are able to look at other attractive people on the street and maybe get a little bit turned on by them, or if you're able to fantasize about maybe like a sexy coworker that you have, or like someone hot that works at the coffee shop and you can get turned on, you haven't lost your libido. For women, especially, libido is a very cerebral thing. While we've been taught to think about our libido as something that is just connected to our genitals and we're thinking about our genitals being responsive, the reality is that pleasure and desire is far much more holistic than that. It is not concentrated to our genitals. In fact, for women and people with vulvas especially, our libido are very, very cerebral. They are responsive to what is happening in our head. So if we have a lot of stress or if we feel just generally unsatisfied in our current relationship situation, our sex drive is not going to fire up, particularly women that are in relationships with men end up feeling like they have become their partner's parent, like they have to nag their partner to do things. And this is an anecdotal, this is based on up-to-date research, which shows that among heterosexual couples, there is a lot a lot of domestic inequality. In general, the spread of domestic labor tends to be fairly equitable within queer relationships. But in straight relationships, because of heteronormative culture that's taught us that we need to adhere to these ridiculous gender roles, and because we have really taught men to see women's role as being their maid, being their cook, 
being their sex worker, being their therapist, what so often happens is they don't actually contribute a lot around the house. Now, if you are doing the lion's share of the housework and your partner is really not contributing a lot, you are probably going to feel very resentful. And resentment is not a sexy thing. When we resent our partners, we do not feel turned on by them. And that's really just one piece of the puzzle. Another big issue that I see in the research and also just from talking to women is that the things that women need in order to create arousal, things which are still intimate acts, but they're generally more non-sexual. So things like extended eye contact, holding hands, deep, passionate kissing, even just literally hugging or holding your partner, giving them a playful little tap on the bum. Research shows that in long-term relationships, these things tend to go away. There's even some studies to show that among married couples, it's not uncommon to go an entire day without making eye contact or having very minimal eye contact. Think about the kind of eye contact that you used to have with your partner when you very first started dating, when you would just hold their gaze and you would feel like you were like looking into each other's soul. That is so important for building desire because one of the most important and neglected things that women require, and I mean require, like it's a non-negotiable for us to get in the mood is to feel seen and heard. And when we are having that extended eye contact with a partner, we feel seen and heard. If we're talking and someone's holding our gaze, we generally think that that person is listening to us and that they're very engaged in what we have to say. We also feel very seen, like they're really seeing us. They desire us because they want to hold that gaze. Extended eye contact is one of the most incredibly intimate acts that we have. Like most people that are having a one night stand would not hold eye contact while they're having that one night stand. Certainly not for the whole time. That would feel very exposing and very vulnerable. And yet we can take our clothes off in front of that person and have sex with them. Extended kissing is also really important. And it is something that tends to go away in long-term relationships. Quite often we will graduate to just the kiss on the cheek or the quick kiss on the lips while we're leaving for work, or we might not even have that. And again, if you think back to the beginning stages of any relationship, when you were just tearing your partner's clothes off all the time, you were not worrying about your libido at all. Chances are very high that you were doing lots and lots of deep, passionate kissing. And again, there's research to show that even something as simple as a seven second kiss can be explosively arousing for women. If you're currently not feeling a strong desire to have sex with your partner, I would be willing to bet that you are also not having deep, passionate kissing. You're not having seven second long kisses every day and you are not maintaining eye contact for extended periods of time, particularly within the construct of the heteronormative model of sex, which is very penetration focused and very much teaches us that sex is what happens when a penis goes into a vagina and teaches teaches us the way to a woman's pleasure is through a man's erection, even though we know from research that that is not the way that the majority of people with vaginas get to climax. The way that most of us get to the big O is through direct sustained clitoral stimulation. In fact, most people with vaginas can get to climax without ever being penetrated because the clitoris is a huge bundle of nerves that are incredibly sensitive and can give life changing pleasure. There's estimated to be more nerve endings concentrated in the clitoris than there is in the head of the penis. And yet the clitoris is so often neglected in sex. And so women will end up faking their orgasm. And if you are having to fake your orgasm or fake your pleasure in any way, or you're just generally having sex that doesn't feel super satisfying, guess what? You're not going to crave it. If someone were to serve you a cake and you were to eat a piece of that cake and it was really stale and dry and kind of flavorless, do you think you would want more of that cake? And yet if someone served you a rich, delicious, moist chocolate mud cake and you bit into it and it was a flavor experience explosion in your mouth, do you think you would be able to stop at one piece or do you think you would be going back for seconds and thirds and you would probably be having to put that cake off limits, put it away somewhere where you couldn't get to it because you would actually lose your self-control because it was so delicious that you would just want to keep eating it. 
We want to do more of things that we enjoy and we want to do less of things that we don't enjoy. And unfortunately, the majority of heterosexual women are not having enjoyable sex. And this is according to the biggest study that we have into sexuality and pleasure, which shows that straight women are having the least orgasms out of any group of people. They are coming just 65% of the time, while their male partners are getting off 95% of the time. Now, not to brag, but us lesbians, we get off 88 percent of the time. And I honestly think one of the biggest reasons for that is because there's so much more focus on clitoral stimulation and penetration is not treated as the gold standard of sex among queer women. Autostraddle did a survey of over 15,000 lesbians a few years ago, asking them what were their most preferred sexual practices. And penetration did not even make the top three. You can guess what number one was. It was clitoral stimulation. Queer women are also a lot more likely to incorporate toys into the bedroom, which can be far more conducive to orgasm because a lot of women require a vibrator in order to reach orgasm. And we have also been taught that you need to reach climax through a penis and you can't incorporate a vibrator into sex. That is going to bruise your male partner's ego. And if you need a vibrator to get there, there's something wrong with you and you should aim to train yourself out of needing the vibrator. That is a model of sex that is male pleasure centered. That is prioritizing a man's pleasure and a man's ego over what you require to get to orgasm. The reality is if you require even a power drill to get to orgasm, if that is how you get there, that is what you should be using. This whole idea that you need to be able to reach climax via the real thing is ridiculous. There is no right or wrong way to get to climax. And if you have found something that reliably gets you to orgasm, Why on earth would you want to train yourself out of that? What you should be aiming to do is to be incorporating that a lot more into partnered sex. Because the heteronormative model of sex is so penetration focused, what tends to happen is that couples will go basically straight into penetration. There'll be very little foreplay at all. And I'm talking about things like touching over the clothes, grinding over the clothes, extended kissing, literally just lying on the bed with your partner and making making out like teenagers. Masters and Johnson, who are essentially the pioneers of researching sexual pleasure and were very cutting edge in their time because they actually got people in labs to have sex and studied them. They hooked them up to machines, they surveyed them afterwards, and they basically broke down pleasure into a kind of science. And one of the biggest findings to come out of their research looking into pleasure for people with vulvas specifically was lubrication and levels of arousal were at their highest highest when the areas that we have generally been taught are the most sexual areas of the body, so the breasts and the vulva, were not being touched. So when other areas of the body were being touched during foreplay, like circling around the breasts, touching the thighs, touching the face, touching the stomach, the neck, when these areas were being touched, when there was more teasing employed, arousal peaked. And that's because what that is doing is creating anticipation. And anticipation is something that happens in our brain. It's the process of getting excited about what is going to happen next. The problem is women often don't get time to get excited about what's going to happen next because so often their partners will pass go and progress straight to penetration. Now, all of this said, of course, there are things that can medically impact your libido. And if you are experiencing other symptoms, especially, or just any change in your body, you should absolutely speak to a doctor. I'm not here to convince you not to speak to a health professional. Menopause, certain types of medication, certain illnesses and stress can impact our libido. But even then, I think it is really important that we look at libido far more holistically and contextually rather than asking yourself, what is broken in me because I don't want to have sex with my partner? Ask yourself, why don't I want to have sex with my partner? Do I feel seen by my partner? Do I feel heard? Do I feel understood? Does my partner take a really genuine interest in my life, in who I am 
as a woman, as a person? Do we engage in lots of flirtation, lots of non-sexual acts like extended eye contact, like passionate kissing, like holding hands? When we're exchanging text messages, are we simply asking our partner if they can pick up some milk on the way home from the shop or are we telling them how sexy they looked this morning and how we can't wait to see them again and how we can't wait to kiss them? Do we physically feel attractive and desirable within ourselves? And more importantly, are we actually having the kind of sex that we would want more of? That is so orgasmic, so pleasurable that we are naturally drawn to crave more of it? Or is it largely disappointing? Do we spend a lot of it performing pleasure? faking pleasure. Because if you answered yes to any of these, the chances are very high that you haven't lost your libido, your sex drive isn't broken, you don't require a special pill to fix it. It's what's happening within your relationship that needs to be addressed. You need to really consider if the relationship you are in is making you happy and if it is the sort of relationship that you want to stay in and if it is, then you need to have a discussion with your partner about ways that you can get these things back. One of the best ways to do that, by the way, is just to start scheduling date nights. I know it's so cliche, but date nights are an amazing excuse to get glammed up. And when we glam up as women, we feel hot, we feel desirable, and our partners get to see us in that new light again, and we get to see them do the double take at us and just feel like they really do desire us, particularly if you have that big reveal moment. So if you have a date night and you don't get ready with your partner, you get ready in separate rooms, or maybe you even just arrange to meet each other at the venue and not even get ready within the same house, you're going to have that reveal moment where they see you and you've done your hair, you've done your makeup, you're wearing a cute dress and you just feel so amazing in yourself. And you can see that your partner notices that as well. That is really conducive to desire, to passion, to anticipation and to feeling seen. If you are constantly lounging around in your sweats in front of your partner, you're not going to feel as desirable. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with lounging around in your sweats in front of your partner. You should be able to feel relaxed enough and comfortable enough around them to do that. But if that's all you do and you don't have those moments, you aren't creating space in the relationship for that excitement and that desire for that dressing up and just feeling your best self, putting on that outfit that just makes you feel like that bitch, then it makes perfect sense why you're probably not going to feel super desirable. And when we don't feel super desirable in ourselves, we don't crave sex. The problem with our cultural ideas around sex is they prioritize male pleasure and men's egos so much that we would basically sooner pathologize women and convince women that they are broken, that there is something wrong with them when they don't want to have sex with their partners instead of considering that maybe their partners aren't very good lovers and maybe their partners also just aren't very good partners to them, that they're not actually providing a satisfying relationship. And if your relationship isn't satisfying, there's not going to be any kind of passion or desire. If you still feel like you would like more help with this topic, I have some very exciting news. I'm launching a program that is specifically for women to help you not just have better sex, but to help you have the best sex, the best sex of your life, the kind of sex that is reliably orgasmic and the kind of sex that includes multiple orgasms. So if you're a woman who's interested in this program, you want to start having groundbreaking sex and you want to work with me one-on-one to do that, you can hit the link below this video to join the waitlist. I will have more details to come as we get closer to launching this very exciting program. It's been in the works for such a long time and I just can't wait to share it with you because I want to give the gift of great sex. What better gift is there than that? So watch this space for that. And if you are new here and you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss my videos when they come out because I'm putting out content way more regularly now. Your girl is organized finally. Make sure you come back here every week to get the sex education that you should have gotten in school but didn't. And I will see you all in the next video. Mwah.